This is the fourth game we're making in this challenge to make five multiplayer party games. In 42 days, but we're not starting on it just yet. We have Tic-Tac-Toe, we have Flappy Race, and the in-progress third game is, Simon says, this week will be critical as it will mark the end of the halfway point. There's still a lot of work to do and just 28 days left to make it happen, or my credibility is going to look sus. So where are we at with Simon Says? Uh, what? It's a pretty simple game. In fact, it's a total walk in the park. So what's the deal? I don't believe it. You gotta be messing with me. I actually have the game basically working. Is this some kind of joke to you? Here's the game plan for the next six days. We're gonna finish Simon Says, or get it to about 50-60% done, and then start on the next game. Maybe tomorrow or the day after. got a bunch of more things done on Simon Says. What I added today is some indications for the other players. When you make a move, do they see it? And a little pattern thing at the bottom that'll tell you how many more items exist. I'd say that's looking pretty good. And we're gonna leave it here for now. Did you remember to deploy it? This game is deployed. Good, then it's time for the fourth game, which is Codenames. So if you haven't played Codenames, it's a party game here. It says number one party game. So we're gonna start on- Wait, wait, wait. Aren't you forgetting something? You know, the thing that's different here. The difference here is that it has teams. You have people on your team, the spy master, I think. Yep, spy master, who has to give one word clues, and then other members on the team have to pick the different cards on the board that the spy master means it was related to. So we're going to officially start on code names tomorrow. I've got quite a bit of code names done. Well, you can't play yet, so it's maybe not that done. There is a board, so you can basically join two teams. When you join, you're auto-selected into a team. Then once you're ready, you click ready. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Both two spy masters can see the cards that belong to them and the cards that don't, as well as the bomb card. If you select the bomb, you die. So the players will only see the gray cards. What about the cheaters? That does mean in Calisius, we need to filter that data coming down to the client. Because because if all the clients get The next thing I'm gonna do is implement the filter decorator so that only the spy masters get the key data. thought that codenames was actually pretty simple yesterday. And then of course today, it was a lot less simple. New week, same hubris. The game isn't that complex per se, but the spy master has like a different role than the rest of the team members. So there's two groups within the two teams, but I do have it working largely. How does this clue text input work? That is a DOM element. It uses Tailwind CSS, and then it uses Preact as the UI framework. Why not just use React? I actually didn't want to use React simply because it would be a lot bigger. I'm really only using Preact because I like some of the things that React gives you for the clue and then the number of matches it has. All right, that's reasonable. I expect that codings will be more or less done tomorrow. That's great news since there's one more game left. And now that one other game also has teams and it also has one person doing something different than the other team members. Oh good, maybe we can. Take a lot of what we did in Codenames and actually apply it to that next and last game. Maybe you'll complete this challenge in time after all. I think I've got Codenames basically finished. Look at this momentum. Now I'm sure there are some bugs and it doesn't look that great. That should be fine, as long as the core gameplay is working. For now, this is maybe 50% done. We're gonna come back to this later. Did you start on the fifth game? So I did start on the next game. Great, what's it called? A game I'm calling Doodle Wars. Never heard of it. Now if you've played Draw Battle or Draw Something, except it's Draw Something where you have teams and your teammates draw and then you have to guess. So basically it's Pictionary. What I'm gonna use for Doodle Wars is not Phaser this time. Wait, what? Why? 
Phaser is great and it's really easy to make a lot of these games with it. But the one drawback is that it's harder to get a smaller build of Phaser for the things that some of these games are definitely not going to need. So when you build out the final production build, you get a much larger bundle size than if you could only take the pieces you need. Now Phaser does let you do that, but you have to kind of build your own version. Okay, so what are you using instead? I'm just going to use Pixie. Since Pixie has a lot of things separated out into packages, you can take only what you need. All right, but what kind of size savings are we talking about? You see, when I build this, it is much smaller in size. All right, that is a meaningful difference. And it's a possibility we're going to go backwards and redo some things in Pixie instead of Phaser. I sure hope you know what you're doing. Now, Flappy Race, I'll probably leave alone. There's probably no reason to change that one. Now I've started doing more work on Doodle Wars. It is in Pixie, so I do have to redo some things that I had working for Phaser. Anything specific? For example, this canvas resize. In fact, I have some incorrect logic in the phaser version already, but somehow it still works. And now it actually makes a lot more sense. I think they call that coding by accident. Now I'm using the state machine as the main way to control the flow of the application from booting to preloading to connecting to the server and to playing the game. Now in phaser, I would have scenes for this. So what did you actually get done? So what I've got to is basically these two teams showing up kind of like code names. That's not much progress. Today is one of those days where I have other stuff to do, like chores. There is something every week. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna pick a thing. You should have seen me pick something, right? And now you get to pick something. Okay. So I think I've forgotten most of the pattern already. Aha. Uh. Damn it. I win. <laughs> <laughs> we also did some code names, but obviously it was just two of us. So it was really more of testing how the game worked. Now onto Doodle Wars. Because I'm building this game in Pixie, there are things that Phaser has that we'll have to figure out how to do here. Yep, that was always the drawback. So now one of those things are actually tweens. So Phaser has a tween system built in. We're using Shifty, which is a pretty small and lightweight animation library. There's just a library for everything. On top of that, I spent some time and added a bundle analyzer so that I can see what's actually taking up the most room. That's interesting. So one thing that I already discovered is that I had accidentally imported all of Lodash when I really only needed Throttle. Wow, that is super useful. So there's not too much to Doodle Wars that's been built. It is different than Codenames in that while there are teams, you actually all play at the same time. Now in Codenames, the other team would just kind of like sit in like idly, 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 idly. Just kind of sat around just watching the game. But in Doodle Wars, everyone is gonna guess, everyone's gonna draw at the same time. That definitely sounds more complex. It is the end of the first half. Tomorrow begins the beginning of the second half. I think we're making good progress, but I have a feeling it is gonna still come down to the wire. Watch the next video to keep following along and subscribe for more of this series to make five multiplayer party games. We've got four games that are half finished and just 21 days left.